did how do you even make friends as an adult are, are we adults we'll fact check that later <laughs> hey and welcome to another episode of spark for spark i am amy and i'm here with the lovely rachel and we are talking about making friends as adults well we're not talking about it we're actually doing it in front of you which is kind of weird and awkward um but i'm here for it so the way this works is we are going to pull random questions out of a jar and we are going to try and answer them live for you. If you have something that you want us to ask each other, if you have a conversation starter that you want to hear sort of played out before your eyes um, or before your ears, I guess, if you're listening to the podcast, feel free to drop it in the comments or shoot us an email. I will drop that in the show notes if you're listening to the podcast. But yeah, let's let's get into it. So much pressure. Rachel's pretending like she's not here. <laughs> I can see you, even if the podcast people cannot. Um, hotel room etiquette. What? <laughs> what does that even mean? That's totally me. It has so, to be. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> so, um, when you are traveling with a person you don't live with, right? Like, I mean, well, even when I'm traveling with my husband, but he already knows about me. But like when you are traveling with a friend, particularly maybe for the first like time or two, because I'm a very big like girls weekend person. Like I like to go <laughs> for those hearing the cracking if we couldn't get rid of it that's just my elderly wrist that I broke when I was in sixth grade that just like doesn't want me to forget about it um you know there's there's like some things you just would never come across if you've only ever like gone out for coffee or like gone to dinner or whatever like when you've lived a whole day with somebody and I will be totally honest and say that I have never gotten to do this completely, but I am a person who would much prefer that we both have our own hotel room, like that I have my own room if I go away with somebody. Um, But if I'm only going away with one friend, we generally get a hotel room with two beds in it and then you're having to like be in other people's space, but you know, my sleeping energy space is like, it's a thing. But I also understand that sometimes people can't afford to, you know, it's not in the budget to be able to have your own room. That's kind of why you're traveling with a friend. So like, how do you exist in, or like, how would you personally comfortably exist in a space with somebody else? Like, what are things people might need to know about you? before are we sussing this out for like an actual trip we're taking <laughs> well no because we'll go even if I find out you're weird in some way I wasn't you didn't expecting know I was weird already <laughs> I said in a way I wasn't expecting <laughs> <laughs> caveat I have um I have a list of things I'm already expecting <laughs> yeah so I I am always kind of for open communication. So if we were hypothetically going somewhere together, like we would have a lot of ground rules um, just because I don't know what we're going to sort of come up against. I don't think, first of all, I would, I would very much prefer my own room um, just because I also have weird sleeping stuff. I will keep you up all night because I don't ever go to sleep. Um, So you're going to have to listen to me like cackling under my covers at TikTok at like four in the morning. Um, Or I'm going to be like, having my sleeping medication and you're going to have to be like worried that I'm dead in the morning. Cause I'm just not moving. Oh, mm-hmm. Um, yeah, right. I'm, I'm a hoot to travel with. Um, yeah, I would say, I would say I'm a people pleaser. So I would say that like, if we hadn't like established boundaries or rules, anything like I would be the person who like changes in the bathroom, just in case you're uncomfortable. I would be the person who like has all my toiletries, like in my suitcase. So you don't have to look at them in case that makes you uncomfortable. I would be talking about what time you wanted to wake up. So I didn't have any alarms that went off at a weird time to make you uncomfortable. I'd be like hyperventilating under like the sheet and the cover and the comforter. So that like the blue light from my phone wouldn't make you uncomfortable. Like (laughs) I'm a blast to travel with because you're going to get exactly what you need. Um, I'm going to be a hot mess though by the end. (laughs) Cause like Mm -hmm. I, 
and like severely like cripplingly introverted where like just having a human being in my presence who's not like my actual partner and even when we started going together like just having another human being in the room with me like I feel like my energy is just being pulled out Mm -hmm. um so after like a good hour like I need to just be myself um there was so this is going to be weird. Um, so I was part of the law management association of Toronto. It was like the Toronto law management association is Taloma. Um, and I went on a Taloma retreat once and I got oh to bring God. a girl, like my, there's a girl who was like my bestie at work. Um, because we lived there, we were working like 16 hour days because yes, um, capitalism, um, so like we were going together cause she was also kind of in a management position and because we were going through work, like work just decided your friends, you can stay together. And we were like, that's fine. Cause we don't actually know how to check into a hotel and we're a little freaked out. <laughs> like maybe having a buddy won't be so bad. Um, but like just being together for that amount of time, like they did this thing where everybody won a prize of some sort. And they started with the really cool ones like TVs. And then they ended up with like joke ones by the end, but like everybody was going to get one. Um, and so I was actually the first prize and I got this cute little Bose um, stereo system. And so I was like, I'm going to go put this in our room. <laughs> like fucked off from dinner. <laughs> like, I like went back to the room. I called my husband. He's like, like, are you supposed to be at dinner? I was like, yeah, I had already no, I'm back in the room. <laughs> like, he's like, where, where's the person you're with? And I was like, she's having dinner. Like, goodbye. <laughs> like, it was the best. Um, but yeah, basically, um, whatever you need, I will bend to your will. Um, etiquette wise, um, we'll probably have a conversation beforehand about what your needs are so that I can come prepared. In case you need to bring anything to make that happen for you. Um, yeah, you'll have a blast. I promise. <laughs> well, that was why I was asking. Um, <laughs> Um, no. And I've, I've not traveled with somebody where I've gotten to have my own room because generally speaking, like I said, the whole reason we're traveling, I mean, not the reason we're traveling together, but like, you know, the reason we could both afford to go was because we were going to split the hotel room for Mm. whatever the amount of time was. And I don't actually think that I would have recognized that need yet until just a few years ago. And Mm -hmm. so it definitely wouldn't have been something I had practiced. Like I would wonder why I came back feeling depleted. Mm -hmm. And now that I've done some work over the last several years, I know that that is because my sleep time really does need to energetically not be combined with anybody else's energy. And so like, I mean, my partner and I sleep in the same room, but we do not sleep in the same bed because I totally can't hack it. Um, I mean, we, we don't have two twin beds because I'm not ready to be like 87 years old, (laughs) but like, there's no way that I can consistently get a good night's sleep. And it's actually really funny because we are, we are finally taking a trip this summer that, um, that is since we started, like, I was like, actually, I think this is part of the reason I'm like, never okay, <laughs> is mm-hmm. because I need my energy a little further away from other people's while I sleep. And he was like, oh, okay, well, good. Like, if you'll go to sleep and like, not, if that will fix this, yeah. then I will sleep wherever you want me to. And he literally was like, am I getting a room with two beds or one bed? Like, no, you're getting two rooms, honey. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe you missed this. I actually went for that. Um, If you could listen to the podcast before we go, but um, because we're going uh, to the place where my heart lives um, in the city, uh, that is not budget wise feasible Mm -hmm. because when we go to the city, we actually use our hotel points to pay for the thing. And, um, cause those rooms are expensive. And so like, I'm not willing to pay three rooms worth of, we literally could get two rooms by the time we use the points to get a room with two beds. So we will be like hacking it in our King bed, but it's going to like one of those blow up beds. You can fit it in a (laughs) Could I please have a roll away? (laughs) Right. You have a roll away. Um, well, he's, he's significantly older. 
is five years older than I. And so like he couldn't sleep on that and I'm not sleeping on that. But, but uh, I am the person in a hotel room that makes my bed every morning. Um, and also that like has all of my things very organized. Like I come in and I unpack my things. I do clean down all the surfaces in hotel rooms before I unpack. That's just a food allergy mom, like Mm -hmm. anxiety thing that lives in my body. Um, but also I worked at a resort growing up, so I know which things they wiped and which things they didn't wipe. And the remote control goes in a plastic Ziploc baggie when we get there. Cause I'm not touching that mess. Cause I don't know who watched what to see what to touch the a note. And I can tell you right now, they did not wash that. So, mm-mm. Mm-hmm. and <laughs> like, so I do, wipe down the inside of the drawers and unpack my things and hang my stuff up. And I do put my toiletries like in the bathroom, but they're very organized. And so I always tell people, like I have, I had a friend that I would travel with a bit at one point in my life. And, um, we would joke, like we would often take a picture of the room because like her bed would look like 76 rabid toddlers had slept in the bed and my bed would look better than like the maid had made it mm-hmm. or like housekeeping or whatever we're calling. It. When I worked there, we were still just, <laughs> um, but like mine would look like crisper. Thank you. Military and anal retentiveness. Um, and like the joke would be, she'd be like, is that bothering you that my stuff is like that on the counter? I'd be like, it doesn't bother me if it doesn't bother you that when you go back in, it's all going to be lined up and I will have wiped all of the bottles off and like the counter. And there's like, every time I wash my hands in a anywhere, I wipe off the sink. Like it's just in my body. I can't help it. Um, and when we leave the hotel, I always, uh, strip the sheets off the bed, um, and fold the comforter back up on the bed. And I take one of the bath towels from the bathroom and I put it in the middle of the floor and I take all of the dirty towels and washcloths and I put them in the center of it and I fold it all up. So the person just has to like pick the four corners up and throw it away. And I take all the garbage and I put it into one garbage bag and I tie that garbage bag and put it by the door because I just know like what a time suck it is to do some of the things. And I also know that in certain places, especially like the city or like when we would, um, I've had to go to Vegas for like some work things or whatever. I know what they're encountering in the other room. Mm -hmm. Um, and they are things that other humans shouldn't have to deal with Mm -hmm. from you. And so like, I want them to come in and be like, oh, thank God. And I usually either leave like a Starbucks (laughs) gift card or 20 bucks or whatever my last day that I'm there. So they can like (laughs) get a drink or a treat on the way home from whatever they had to deal with that day. (laughs) Yeah. But so I am a little ridiculous to travel with. I don't feel like everybody else should be doing that. But as long as it doesn't bother you that like I can't sit and hang out if your bed looks like Mm -hmm. and I'm going to probably pull the thing up a little bit and like then we'll be okay. But I don't think you and I would have the same issue. I'm a funny sleeper. Like I'm a funny sleeper where I so we have a joke in our bedroom that like I sleep in a taco like because so my husband and I got separate sheets along to like sh- like separate quilts comforters everything like duvet covers like separate 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 um because I like really do need to sleep like wrapped up like a burrito I need the pressure I need the tension um, or I can't fall asleep and the problem was I would make my side into a taco and then my giant six foot five husband would just whip me across the bed essentially so like I'm all like like I can't get more wrapped up and then he would pull it like a tiny bit and I would just go flying um and so like we have this joke where like anytime he tries to like cuddle me or whatever like and he's trying to get in my covers just to put his armor on me there's this little voice going get out of my taco <laughs> who invited you here no one <laughs> you're breaching like there's a breach in the system like you're letting all the air in <laughs> like it's a huge problem um and the problem is that he travels so often that I'm very much used to having the bed yes. like, to myself I use that loosely because also dogs um 
but yeah, so like we all have like our own spots, like Pancake sleeps on his pillow. It's like her freaking throne. She's the perfect size. Schnitzel likes to sleep kind of like looped up in my legs in the taco. Um, and we all hang. So like, it's shocking to me how many of my clients these days are like, oh, like, please don't judge me. My partner and I sleep in separate beds. Honestly, my husband and I are counting down until this um, until our current mattress, like finally gives out, we are definitely getting a German style bed, which is the two double beds that kind of latch together so that when we're feeling cozy, the bed is one huge bed, enough room for everybody. But if I'm having trouble sleeping or he's sick or he's kind of feeling restless at night, we can separate them so I can still get sleep. Cause again, like you, like out of the two of us, out of the two of us, I'm the one who can't sleep. Mm -hmm. And so like he can sleep wherever, but if he's going to be disruptive to the rest of the team, like I need to be able to have my own space where again, like he's so big as a human being, but just rolling over in bed, like I'm waking up because he's bouncing the whole mattress. Like, yeah. Getting to the point now where like even the dogs, I can feel walking on the mattress. So I'm like, we're almost there. It's almost time. <laughs> yes. So close. Yes. Because Rob can sleep anywhere too, from all of his time on the boat. Yeah. And so like, if you can sleep in a rack, like you can yeah. not, I rack, I mean, yes, he slept there too, but like, if you can sleep in a rack on the ship, like you can literally go to sleep anywhere mm -hmm. and I don't have to be like wrapped up, but I do have to feel like nothing is coming in from the mm -hmm. outside. So yeah. I, and I sleep really far down in bed, like because I have plenty of space for my, I have like, even when I'm very far down in bed, there's still plenty of room before the end of the bed. But like, I have the blanket like wrapped up like this under my chin. Mm -hmm. And so when he yanks the blanket, yeah. I will literally scream, that was my throat. <laughs> Because it literally is like, he's just yeah. like clotheslined me. Yeah. And so it has been the best thing to just realize, like, we will actually still be married next yeah. year if we are sleeping in a different Yeah. Room. Well, and it's like, it's so weird. Like, and it's weird that it has this like sense of shame. Like every time someone tells me, they're like, please don't judge me. Like it's for blank reason. I'm like, honey, like, I don't need to know what the reason is. Like I'm counting the days until I can have this. And like, yes. we're lucky that we figured out what the problem was so early. Like we've known that this was a problem for a while because he comes back and suddenly I can't sleep for like the whole time he's back. And then he leaves and suddenly I can sleep again. Um, so it's like, that. but if we were traveling, like I do make a taco, but because of the way that I do it, like only my half of the bed is disturbed. And so like, I can literally slide out and be like, Whoop, and it's that's done. hilarious. <laughs> That's yeah. hilarious to me. Oh my I gosh. Be, I think we'd be good travel partners. I think so too. But I also think part of the reason we would be travel good travel partners is because we are communicative mm. and we don't have, I mean, now I have not trouble. I have less trouble. I only still have some trouble saying, <laughs> saying what I need, but because of who we both are and the fact that we actually are just better if we have the information, that if we get surprised with the information, like that. Yeah, please no there's, surprises. There's if, room. Like no, can, oh no. You can label on the counter where you need my stuff to be. I promise it'll be in the place, but like, just don't surprise me. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Imagine you like whipping out like a label person. maker from your suitcase. You're like, one moment, please. Like, please, <laughs> please let me know everything that you will be putting on the counter and I'll be right back. <laughs> but also maybe we just need to pay attention to where we can both get our own room since we would both prefer that anyway. I'm happy with an adjoining room. Yeah. Like I'm happy to have a room where like if there's one room with a king bed and one room with two double beds in it, I'm happy to be in whichever room the other person doesn't want so that we can have an adjoining room. I don't need to be traipsing the hotel looking for you, yeah. but like, <laughs> because chances are I will forget what room you're in because generally I forget what room I'm in. So like, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, or even like an, Air oh. an Airbnb with like two rooms in it, like like a house or something just with two rooms. Yes. Easy peasy. Yes. Yes. I won't go on about the tiny cabins that I'm obsessed with again, but I feel like they are the perfect place because it's not outlandishly pricey and you are literally in your own space. But if we're stay if we're staying in the Appalachian Mountains, I will not be coming out of my room once it's 
went out of my cabin once it's dark to come get you because what comes outside in the dark there stays outside no. in the dark there. If you heard other. it, you didn't hear it. <laughs> After Sunday, we'll just Zoom with each other. It's true. <laughs> we'll be fine. We'll just be report- recording our podcast. But like, we're actually completely near each other. We're just too afraid to go out in the dark and be near each other. Um, tattoos. Oh, a tattoo. A tattoo. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> huh. okay. So, like, best and worst. <laughs> what is your best and worst tattoo experience? I only. How do you feel tattoo. about a tattoo? Do you have a tattoo? What is it? I have a giant tattoo, which <laughs> I am like fully covered, and I cannot. I know. Show. I'm like, crap. I, that was not the day to pick it. I will. I will send you a photo. I will send. You, I don't know how I would show it on camera, anyways. Um. So what it is, is like, I can tell you what it is. So first of all, I got this tattoo after I got married, which like, no, lame, but like, no, it was really important to me. Um, because I came from a family where like, if you got a tattoo under our roof, it meant like literal death, like not the throat, like literal, actual, like oopsie to death. Um, so like I got married, I decided I wanted a tattoo. My partner was like totally on board. Um, and so it's like, it's on both of my shoulders and it goes all the way up my neck. So like, and I forget I have it all the time because I'm the only human being who can't see it. (laughs) And so like, I'm just walking around thinking I'm a clean bean all the time because I got this like 10 years ago. Um, And then something will come up about tattoos and I'm like, oh yeah, I have a tattoo. (laughs) Maybe that's the place I need to put one if I get one because I'll never remember that it's- I forget about it all the time and people are like, oh, I love your tattoo. And I'm like, my what? Oh yeah, <laughs> I have a giant tattoo. <laughs> um, so what it is is it's like a tree. It's like a tree with no leaves. It's a dead tree. Everyone, like everybody that I've talked to about, like when we're at a beach or something, come like, oh my god, the tree of life. And I'm like, oh no, that tree is dead. So it's a dead tree, gigantic, all black, and it has birds like flying away. Um, and then it has a poem from our wedding. Flame, oh. love it. I wrote the poem, so like it's important to me. Joe will not be sharing on the podcast, but I will tell you <laughs> in private. Um, but it's basically like the tree is unalive and the birds are leaving. They're finding better ground. Um, and that feels like really important to me and my story. But the funny part about getting the tattoo, like it was a four and a half hour tattoo. Um, because it's so big, it's all on bones. <laughs> like it's like spine, shoulder blades, we're here for it. Um, and so I was getting it with a friend. Um, he was like covered in tattoos. He's like, Oh, I know exactly where we're gonna go to get it. Like, I trust these guys, no problem. So he went and got his tattoo. I think this came because they showed you a TikTok video of a tattoo artist being like, like, boys think they're so tough. Like, no, it's girls, like a girl won't you'll you tattoo her in the most sensitive spot and she will not flinch that happened to me yes but actually I put this in like when I was doing like our favorites whatever thing what? because I'm That's like funny. obsessed with a tattoo yeah so so it's funny so he went and he got he went and he got like a little sheep which I thought was funny but he was like wiggling and squirming the whole time with this like it took 10 minutes to put the sheep on him um and then he was like don't worry I'm gonna stay I'll hold your hand whatever and so because it was on my back I was like face down for the entire tattoos so they have like the little massage things where you like stick your face in the hole um and so like he's going and going and going and going and I hadn't flinched a single time and he kept checking like hey like can you check and see if she passed out and I'm like no I'm good I'm good and like like, like the manager kept coming in and he's like does she need like an orange juice or something like I would really feel more comfortable if you had like an orange juice or something so that we know that you didn't like pass out under there four and a half hours not a peep I was like can you all stop talking to me like I'm in my like this is really painful and I'm in my happy place can you stop distracting me like I'm trying to do my deep breathing um but when I saw that video on TikTok I was like oh yeah like that was so funny because they literally kept assuming that I had just passed out because I was so still um so like that like would do it again I have um plans for a second tattoo that I want on my thighs so that mm-hmm. I can actually enjoy it. Um, but this one also about my partner, which I know is supposed to be bad luck, but like, I don't believe in that and I don't care. Um, so you know how the cute sea otters, not the ugly sea otters, um, hold hands when they're sleeping so they don't drift apart. Um, so because Eric travels so often and like he used to go on tour where he would like get on a bus and he'd be in one state and then he'd wake up in a different state. And so I never knew where he was because he was hitting like America <laughs> in 12 weeks. Um, 
so people used to ask me like, Hey, like, where's your, where's your husband? And I'd be like, I don't know. He's in outer space. Um, cause I'm not looking it up just to answer this question for you. He's checked in. He's alive. He's good. Like, I don't actually need to know what state he's in because he will not be in there by the time I've looked it up. Um, so I thought it would be really cool to get, um, like one of those watercolor galaxies, um, and to have like the two little otters holding hands with like the little, you know, those like old school sort of like space helmets that are like the scuba diving helmets. So like Eric only wears plaid. He only wears plaid and cargo shorts, which I hate, but they make total sense in his industry because he's got all his like markers and tape and measuring things in there. Um, so I wanted it to be these two little otters and he's got his little cargo shorts and his plaid shirt and he's going to have a little flashlight because he's a lighting designer, like showing me the universe. And then mine is going to be like a cute little otter with like her little bow. And we'll just be floating around together in outer space, but we're holding hands. So even when we're apart, we don't get lost. So I'm just waiting for the right artist. And then like, I found one and then like the Coco Roro hit. Um, and so I think their shop closed down, but I'm looking to find it again. Um, and I have to sort of do it when it's not running season. Cause I can't run for a bunch of weeks with the, um, with the bandage on. It's like, when am I going to time this? So that like, I don't need to wear pants, but also like, I don't want to be running. Um, cause that's going to take a hot minute to heal. I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's definitely on my bucket list of things that I want. And I've been committed to it for like years and years and years. And so I'm like, this has to be a good plan because like I've wanted it for like 10 years now. So I'm pretty committed. I like that. Yeah. What about you? I have no tattoos because Um, I am terrified of making a decision that I have to stick with, which is hilarious since I got married when I was 20 years old. Like, I mean, maybe that I, 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 that's I was more like reversible than a tattoo. I used I used the end of my <laughs> I used my entire commitment <laughs> situation for that. Yeah. There's nothing else I can do. Um, but I do have like tattoos that I would like. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm too afraid to choose to put them on my body permanently because what if I don't like them anymore you or like a white tattoo. whatever. I have a friend who has these, she has the most amazing glow in the dark tattoos. It's just white ink. Um, and it glows in the dark. It's beautiful. Like lattice work. Like it's amaze balls. Um, I should have put that in my inside joke swear words. Amaze balls is another favorite. Um, but yeah, like if you're not sure, like go for a white one and then it just looks like nothing. Yes. <laughs> like, so I, um, I have had very specific messaging that I am water, which like has a lot to do with who I am as a person who does healing work and as a person who, well, I'm a water sign, but also just like that my whole kind of growing into my own self was becoming more fluid and Mm -hmm. like flexible and, Um, and kind of just, you know, we always kind of joke because if you're a friends fan and you know who Monica is on friends, um, we joke about that. I'm Monica because I like to have things exactly. And there's like one particular scene where, um, after she gets married and she has like all of her really pretty China and they're using it and her brother's like, ha ha with the, and she's, and she goes, um, comedy with the with the plates will not be well received or something like that and we do say that in my house all the time but she also is like I'm breezy like she's trying and so my family often jokes they're like oh you're so breezy like when I'm like it's okay it doesn't matter my son will be like oh my gosh you're so breezy Um, yeah but but I really uh I would like at least a small wave tattoo, but I want it to not be like, I want it to be very simple, but I don't want it to be something that like everybody who has a wave tattoo has that wave tattoo. And so, um, there's a way that I sign my artwork with a lowercase R that looks like a wave. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking that I would kind of maybe like that. It's my business logo though. So I don't want to be that guy. Mm -hmm. that's pretty that you're a piece of art you're like I am signing oh well that's that's a separate step in (laughs) mental awareness that I but like I have considered like 
getting it up under my hairline or like getting it up on the back of like the very back center of my neck so that you really only do see it if I have my hair up, up or like behind my ear I or my um, wrist or something. But I think it might end up on my foot if I ever do decide I can handle it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, there, (laughs) there are people in my life that I would like to get a tattoo for that, like, (laughs) would not be interested in, like, would not be excited that I had commemorated them with a tattoo, but it would be meaningful to me. Um, But uh, my lucky number is 21. And I've kind of wanted like, some kind of cool 21 in some way that's like, Mm -hmm. not the number on my body. Um, but I really am kind of afraid to get, there were a couple that I wanted when I was, um, when I was going to be active duty military, but didn't, you know, obviously I, I didn't end up doing that. So I didn't do it, but there are some things like maybe I would like to do or whatever, but I don't know. It's, I love when people have like their whole chest and like this when you know, like when women have like their whole chest and like the side of their neck and all down their arm and it's like really beautiful, pretty colorful. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I wish I could do that and decide in three days that I don't want it there. Like I just can't commit to the thing, but I desperately want to get my nose pierced. And um, my husband is definitely a person like if I had had like me having two holes in my ears was like, ooh, I'm dating the rebellious girl, you know, but like, so there are things that I didn't do to my body in college because I couldn't Mm -hmm. at the time I would have normally done it. And then I got married to somebody who would not have been okay with that. And now he's in a space in our relationship where he realizes I don't care. (laughs) <laughs> and like, also it's my body and you don't actually get to say anything about it. And so, oh, well, too bad. Like if it makes me happy, mm-hmm. have you learned yet that if I'm happy, like you will have a happier space, which my dad like tries to say to him all the time about things. Cause he was very obsessed about like, did I get the couch he liked too? Or did I pick mm-hmm. out, you know, dishes he liked too? And my dad was like, dude, why, why yeah. does it? Like, have you, are you stupid? (laughs) Like, you know, is this, is this a hill you want to die on? This is is the one you, this is the one you're picking. (laughs) You didn't like the curtains. They had a flower on them. That's the thing you're gonna. Yeah. I mean, I feel like for me, I feel like for me, the tattoos are okay because I am very much like, I don't throw out pictures of my ex-boyfriends because that's my life. Like, I'm not going to not remember who that person was because I'm not in a relationship with that person anymore. And so I find that I feel the same way about tattoos. Mm -hmm. Like this was something that I felt really passionate about at this time in my life. And there's something to be said about wanting to commemorate that. And it's my body and I'm taking, like, it doesn't matter. I could lose all of my possessions. I still have my body. I can decorate it however I see fit. And I don't think that I'll ever be sorry that I have them, even though they're in relation to this other person, because that's kind of how I see time and space. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really that it doesn't matter to me if we stay together or not. Like that's not what the tattoo is for. Right. To, you know, put into life this, you know, the way that I feel right now and who I am right now and how that person existed into the world. And I'm going to carry that person with me, just like I carry all the crappy stuff with me. Like this is something that I'm going to choose right. to take forward. Um, because it felt really important to me that it's commemorated or that it's committed to memory or however you want to put it. Um, yeah, but yeah, Eric is also very much about like the body modifications are not quite his jam. Like he comes from a very conservative family. Um, and I can like, I have seven holes in my ears. Um, I decorate two to four of them normally. Um, but like, I also had a belly button ring. It was my first and pretty much only rebellion. <laughs> like when I turned 18, like I wanted a belly button ring forever because my roommate in university had one and I thought it was like a co- thought it was cool beans. Um, and my parents were like, no, absolutely not. My stepdad was like, you're going to get peritonitis and die, which is like an inflammation of the sort of protective sac all of our intestines live in and stuff. Um, and so I got it when I turned 18 and I didn't need their permission and I named it Perry. Um, 
after peritonitis, obviously. Um, and it was like my greatest love. Like I kept the original jewelry that I had. Um, and then after my endometriosis surgery, because they went in through my belly button, the shape of my belly button changed. And so he was like, Jenny, he, <laughs> he was jutting out at a funny angle and kept getting caught on my pants. Um, and then I ended up getting my first infection in like 25 years, just because the ball kept getting loose and was like cutting the skin. And so I had to take him out. Um, and I knew my husband really loved me when he was like, I'm oh, sorry, pancakes hitting me with her cone. Um, I knew he really loved me and honored kind of my body and what I wanted, that it was my choice when he was like, don't worry, honey. He's like, when it heals over, I'll take you to get it. I'll take you to get him repaired. Like he needed to say, I'm going to get you a new one. He's like, don't worry. We'll get him fixed. Like he just has to heal over and then we'll get him fixed and you can have him back. It's like, I still, like I lost the ball. I still have his little body. Um, and I'm just going to take him and be like, you need to put in this one. Um, and he needs a new head. <laughs> like his, his head fell off. He needs a new one of those. Um, but he will be returning in his normal form. Like I'm going to die with that thing in my body. <laughs> like, if I only get one rebellion, I really have to like milk it for all it's worth. That's hilarious because in college, I almost got my belly button pierced because I knew I couldn't get my nose pierced because I would be out of uniform, mm -hmm. but my, because I'm so short, my uniform dress pants hit right on my belly mm -hmm. button. And I knew I wouldn't be able to let it heal. Cause I had to wear those pants every week. Yeah. <laughs> and so like, there was no opportunity and I did almost get a big tattoo on the top of my foot in college. And then I just chickened out. I actually went with a friend and they got their tongue pierced. And I was like, I think we've had enough trauma for today and we went home, but I will also be totally honest that like, I have a really serious history of like going to the hairstylist and telling them exactly what I want and them not doing it. And I think like, or like a thousand other places, right? This yeah. is what I want it to be. And it's, it's not that. And so I think there's also a control issue situation that like, if I say I want it here and they do it three millimeters to the right, I am going to see that every single time I look at it from now until the end of eternity, I will never not be able to see but that. Like show it to you, right? That will be upsetting. I'm telling you though, me, because of who I am in the world, somehow it would end up like not like they'd sneeze or like somebody had a crisis next to that, like something. I just feel like something will happen. Okay. And that makes me very nervous. So you're not breezy about that. I'm not, I'm not breezy about anything, <laughs> but like, but I'm particularly not breezy about saying what I want and then feeling like people have ignored me. And I think I do not want to have a permanent thing on my body that just like shows up as like, see how nobody pays attention to what you want. Mm -hmm. Because I will tell you when I got, cause I used to have um, a whole slew of holes. I had like seven on one and like five on the other and I had issues and they all had to grow back in my second one stayed. But when I got my second holes done, they put the dots on me and I said, okay. And they both ended up slightly higher than where they were. And it affected where all of my other piercings oh, no. were going to go. So like, I don't even trust your little stencil dots, whatever, like, I yeah, don't know, I you. but I'm pretty sure at some point, either I will get my nose pierced or I will end up with something small somewhere I because it will be, be the thing that trip. I do for me. <laughs> we're we're going to have to go on a girl's trip where we permanently wreck Rachel's body. We'll take you along. Every we'll time, a podcast. <laughs> well, every we'll time I go it. back home, I say, I'm going to go somewhere and get my nose pierced and I just don't. So. Mm. We'll see, but I clearly I have to blow my nose a lot because I'm allergic to where I live. And so like, I'm also worried about that. Like I will have that to blow my fair. nose all of the time. Yeah. <laughs> because of who I am. All right. We, we beat that one to death. Okay. Two literally leapt out of the container at me. Let's wow. use one of them. 
as they break my hand on my desk. Dream travel destination. We're having like a vacation Mm -hmm. theme today. I like it. Dream travel destination. Honestly, my husband and I go to um, this like couples resort. So like no kids of any kind, only adults and only adults together. So like no weird sharking people. I like Uh, that. Right. It's the freaking best. Um, And we love it there. Like we take every vacation there and it's because he travels so extensively for work that he just wants to sit on a beach and do nothing. And I find it like I take so much of my energy going and seeing things like the travel is hard for me. Being around so many people is hard for me. If we're going to tourist places, they're full of people. Like we went to Central Park once and like he bought me a Gatorade and took me back to the hotel. Like we saw the we saw the gates to Central Park and I was like, I just want a snack and I want a nap. And he like was like, all right, like let's turn around. Um, so like I am a terrible, terrible tourist. Um, like where anytime there's any kind of time adjustment, I need like three weeks to write myself. Um, so like we would not do well anywhere in like Europe. We would not do well, um, anywhere that there's like a sort of time change and we have to be somewhere at a specific time. Um, so we really like going to this resort in Jamaica. We go there like twice a year if we can. Um, it's Jamaican owned, which we really like, um, cause then we're, it's going straight back into the community versus like a lot of them are owned by people in Spain. Um, so we're like, okay, cool. Like we'll keep the money here. Like whatever. It feels nice. Um, and yeah, we just sit on a beach and I would say that that's my dream destination. Like when I had my surgery, they told me like, so you're, so when we give you this medication for you to go to sleep, you're going to have a dream. So think of something that you love and you're, that's going to get stuck in your brain until you wake up. And so I went to sleep, just imagining us sitting on this beach at our favorite resort and literally woke up with the exact same, like, like it was like time disappeared. It was the weirdest thing where I was like, wait, I just started thinking about my thing. Like, what do you, what do you mean I'm awake? And why does everything hurt? And why are there 15 people like holding me down on this bed? Like, this is not, this is not what I was thinking about. <laughs> like abort mission. Now I would um, like an orange juice, please. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Eric and I, like Eric is from Estonia. Um, he's third generation Canadian, but their culture is very tight knit, especially here in Toronto. Like he grew up speaking Estonian, not English. Um, and so for our honeymoon, which we never actually took, um, because he traveled all the time, we were going to go to Estonia. Um, and then we figured out how poorly I transitioned through times. And he was like, Oh, we're going to have to go there for like a month. Um, so that you'll have three days, like you'll have three weeks to transition and then we can like actually hang out and go do things and then we're gonna have to move back here and like transition for like half a month he's like oh god this is gonna be a nightmare um so I would definitely have to say our dream thing we kind of do already um and it's just a relaxing beach vacation like I drink twice a year well I mean I guess three times I drink once when we go winter camping just because that's kind of the point um everybody gets a little goofy and then I just drink pina coladas made with rum cream which tastes like milkshakes um and sizzle a little bit on the beach and that's like kind of it what about you I love that um I think that uh the Coco Roro made me realize how desperately I miss like being in the woods Mm -hmm. um and so I am really loving where we go um out like out in these little cabins in the woods because I'm obsessed with a tiny home and getting to live in one for a few days like makes me happy um but I do not like being a tourist either and so um we also did not get to have a honeymoon um we went on a trip um five or six years after we got married and then and it was great um because it was essentially just being on the beach Mm -hmm. and then um we went back to that same place a few years later and like didn't have the same experience and so we were like well that was a bummer because we thought that might be the place that we often go um but I do like to play golf wherever we go. And because that a golf course just feels like home to me, um, that kind of makes it a little bit that, but I think it's why I love going back home to the city at least two, three times a year, because 
it's not touristy to me. Like we do just pick up food. We do go hang out in Central Park. We do just walk around. We don't spend our time in the touristy areas. Sometimes we stay near them because they're less expensive than other spaces and they're kind of more centrally located. Um, But I like just going and like, I just own a Metro pass Mm -hmm. for the city. Like I don't have to buy one. It's in my wallet all of the time. And so it does just feel like being in a second home space. Um, But we also went to Jamaica um, to play golf and that was fabulous. Like being able to just chill out, which I had to really learn how to do. That yeah. was really hard for me. That was a specific skill, relaxing. I need all the pina coladas <laughs> like, to feel comfortable. I'm like, well, I can't stand up and do anything. So this is going to have to do, <laughs> I guess. This well, is I don't drink at all ever. So Rob would just be like taking me to the nearest hospital if I had any mm-hmm. alcohol. Mm-hmm. But um, we, because I don't love being a tourist, my I had gone to um, England with my grandparents for a couple of weeks when I graduated from high school. So I could have the like uh, several days to adjust and then like do something and then leave. Um, That was before I couldn't sleep as much as I can as an adult, but like we would love to go and stay somewhere in Scotland, Ireland, Mm -hmm. England, but like be at all of the places for a really solid period of time. So like take two or three months and like stay here for three weeks, stay here for a month, stay here and kind of get to travel all over those spaces. Mm -hmm. Um, So we'll see if that ever gets to happen. But we'll take the podcast on the road then. Right. It'll be the same thing where I'll just be here and you'll be wherever. (laughs) And I'll still. So what is it that you don't like about touristy things? I don't like crowds. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't like crowds of people who don't know where the fuck they're headed. Mm -hmm. I don't like crowds of people who don't know where the fuck they're headed, who stop in the flow of traffic to find out where they're headed and don't know how to pull over with their body. Mm -hmm. So like, I will be honest. When we walk through the city, I do have to like avoid Times Square. I do because Mm -hmm. I am just like, I literally can't stop coming out of my mouth. And you know, I am not unkind. Like we joke that I have no filter, but like, I don't say things to strangers, but there is something that happens to my body that I'm just like, the fuck are you doing? Or like, like, or people will like come out of a Starbucks and they'll stop. I'm like, you were just fucking in a Starbucks. You could have sat down and looked on your phone to see where you were going. So you knew when you came out the door, whether you were going right or left, what is even the matter with you? Like, I can't handle it. So I don't yeah. like that. Um, that's not to say that I don't enjoy getting to experience some of the things that tourists might go someplace to experience, mm-hmm. but I don't like um, things of importance being commercial commercialized and like in some ways feel to me exploited for things like being a New Yorker, having where the Twin Towers were be like a thing people who have never gone to New York want to go see. It's like, while they were here, would that have been on your list of places you absolutely needed to walk by? Why is a place where lots of people horrifically died Mm -hmm. a destination for you? Like, I don't understand it. I can't even go be near it. I mean, energetically, I can't because I just feel all of the stuff. But like, that just doesn't make any sense to me. I think if things are historic and important to where you live, they should just be allowed to be. Mm -hmm. Um, So that just feels weird to me. And also I don't like that they have in some way been like tainted. Like I wish I had gotten to see that when it just was and wasn't a place, but mostly it's the people not knowing where they're headed. Yeah. I, I just don't get the point. Like when we went to, so Eric is in New York all the time. And so over time he's seen a bunch of really cool things. And so I was there with him just because he had to drive a piece of equipment to 
a place like, there was not enough time to ship it he was like well i guess i'm putting it in the car and i'm driving it there do you want to come um and so I came along, it was fine. And he was like, I'm going to take you on a tour of New York. And I was like, I hate that. And he was like, no, no, I'm going to take you on a tour made just for you. And it's the only time I've ever seen things like as a tourist that I very much enjoyed. And it's because my husband knows me very well. So he took me to the M&M store so I could see the wall of all the different M&Ms. <laughs> and I thought it was so cool. Um, and then he took me to a hotel he stayed at once where there's a robot that puts your suitcases and little oh, um, lockers sold. for you. Right. It's an automated hotel. And so we just sat there for 20 minutes drinking Starbucks, watching this robot arm put people's suitcases in these lockers. Um, and he was like, I'm going to take you to Central Park. And we saw a bit of it and it was so hot. I was like, I'm not, I'm not digging this. Like I've seen a park before we got here. I can say I've been here fine. We'll come back again and do that. And then he took me to there was like a marina where you could see like the underside of big submarines because they're just getting plopped into the water. So if you want to see the under, he's like, do you want to see the bottom of a submarine? I was like, oh my God, yeah. Like, it was the best thing ever. And it was like none of the things that you're technically supposed to go and see. Like he took me to Times Square just so I could say that my body had been there. I don't get it. Why is I don't need it. It's not as big as you think it is. No. There's not like, it's just a bunch of signs. Like I don't understand. And like somebody who's listening might be all into this stuff. Like, I just don't get it. It's like going to the empire state building. I'm like, it's a building. I don't get it. <laughs> like, okay. I saw it. Like, I don't know what the point is. And it was a long walk here and I'm usually hungry and I usually have to pee. And I'm like, okay, I'm not enjoying this. <laughs> like I would like to go and have pizza, please. And thank you. I don't understand the empire state building either. I actually went and see. And also I will say, I often end up going to New York with people who have never been before. And I'm like, Oh my God, because they'll be, I'll be like, is there something that you desperately want to see? And then I will plan the other things that we are going to go do. But if there's, and they're like, I want to see this and this and this. And I'm like, Okay. Um, that's not anywhere near each other. So you actually can't do all of those things in one day. Like that's not how time and space works. And they just like, don't get it. But I once went with somebody who was obsessively like focused one track mind on seeing the empire state building. And we were going to miss our train out home oh, no. because she was like, I have to see. And I was like, do you see this building? Do you see the doors to the building? Pretend it's the empire state building. Because by the time we get to the empire state building, you can't see that it's the empire state building yeah. anymore. You can only see that it's that from over there. When we leave, yeah. when we came in on the bus this morning, you should have paid attention out your window. Like, I don't know what to tell you. This is not it. And we are, we are not walking 87 more blocks so you can see something and get to it and be like, I can't see it. And I'm going to be like, I know. And then I'm going to be like, and I'm leaving you here because you can't walk fast enough to exist here. But I really generally like going places that I like the energy of and would like to live. Mm -hmm. So like, I enjoy New York partially because it's home, partially because I get to go back and I get to see theater, which not that I don't get to see theater, other places, it feels different to me there. Um, that's not to say if you haven't seen a Broadway show, you've not seen good, real, beautiful, wonderfully done theater. That's not it, but there's like something there for me. So that is the one like I guess, touristy thing that I do every time I'm there. But that's generally what our trip revolves around. The yeah. rest of the time is just existing. Um, like I had a friend who wanted to go see Kleinfeld. That's fine because that's not in like <laughs> the M&M store <laughs> situation. I'm like, I can't. I remember my mom and I went to see a show once and we just didn't want to like bop someplace else. So we went to like the TJ Fridays or something in Times Square and we never eat in Times Square when we, when we, cause I die because I don't have enough water. Um, like we just didn't want to deal with it. And we sat down somewhere and admittedly these places are more expensive than they are other places, right? Like in 1998, a chicken sandwich and French fries was like eighteen ninety nine. You know, like it's an, it's ridiculous, right? Yeah. And so my mom and I sit down, 
And of course, she and I came from a space of like single mom and no money at one point in our life. So like, this is like 87 meals worth of money. Mm -hmm. And like, we just got a burger or a sandwich or something to share. And these people all sat down. They were so fussy. They were from somewhere else in the United States, not there. And they were so ridiculous about like needing to all be together. Like, no, we can't be six people over here and six people over here or whatever. And they finally seat them all. They brought all of them their drinks. They had already taken like, you know, whatever. And they opened the menus and they're just like screaming at the top of their lungs about the prices. And I'm like, I don't know where you thought you were headed. Yeah. Like if you wanted something that didn't cost this, you literally could your little body out of here, walk two blocks, any direction and find a place. that's like two slices and a drink for like four ninety nine, mm-hmm. right? Like you didn't have to be here. Nobody tricked you into this. It's literally times square. It's going to be a shit show, mm-hmm. but also that's like the stuff I don't like, like, Oh, New Yorkers have an attitude. Are you serious? Because most of the problematic things that I hear and see are the tourists. And I don't yeah. like how people treat things that aren't theirs. Right. So if you are from another part of the country and you come there and you like throw crap all over the, like I watch you throw crap on the ground at the park or I watch you at like, no, it's not the whole of New York city is not a garbage can. And like, Central Park is where the kids who live here literally go to play in the park. They don't need your crap all over. That's not how we're treating our spaces. And so it's, you know, it really just generally is that I can't stand people like just paying. You cannot know, but it's the not knowing and like also having no concept that you're like taking up other people's space and energy. That's. That's the thing for me, but I just hate to see people's beautiful things. Like when we've been in Jamaica or we've been in, um, I like to go see, um, the out of town things for Broadway. Like when they're out of doing their out of town tryouts before they go to Broadway. And so Mm -hmm. we had gone, uh, to Boston to see a show a few years ago and Rob and I loved Boston. We would not as New Yorkers, we would not have chosen to go there on purpose, but we went for this show and he and I really enjoyed like walking around, seeing the historic things. And I will say that I am sure, uh, Bostonians that have like several generations of people that have lived in the city probably feel differently, but a lot of their, aside from like the stupid, you know, souvenir shops and stuff that were attached to some things, it felt very, uh, less adulterated to me Mm. than other places. Cause like we've lived near DC and we've lived, you know, near Seattle and like, it felt very like, people had not kind of come in screwed around with it. But when you're in some place like Jamaica, like the Caribbean, like I, I don't love the way that they've maybe had to cater Mm -hmm. to their white tourists to be just blatant about it. Like, I don't like how they feel like they've had to cater to their white tourists to be able to make money. It makes me angry. If you're going to someplace, go and genuinely enjoy the places. If you lived there, don't go and hope that it's been some way built and catered to you. And Mm -hmm. so that might be part of my problem too. Yeah. Like, That's like when so like we didn't go for a long time. Eric was lobbying and lobbying for us to go to an all inclusive, and I like it just feels so gross to me. Like I'm a trained social worker, I like spent years like steeped in social social justice. It did not feel right to me. And he finally came and was like, hey, like I found a resort that's 100% Jamaican owned. All of the money is going to go back. He's like, we're going to go there on a transport that is completely Jamaican owned. He's like, I have brought lots of things for tips and whatever. We brought um, the place that we were going was doing like a school drive for the kids because we were there in the summer. And so we came, we were packed up with like notebooks and pencils and paper and all the stuff that was on their list. Um, And like that felt okay because I was like, okay, we're coming here. Um, Mm -hmm. And I understand that this industry runs essentially on tourism 
Um, so like, cool, you can definitely have our money. We're going to come. We're not going to leave any trace of ourselves here. Like we're going to, if you're having a drive, like we're, of course, we're going to bring as much stuff as we can fit in our suitcases. Um, Eric's mom is a professor of anatomy and she had sent me this book, which was technically for kids. Um, but it was a really cool way of kind of looking at the human body and it's called how we work. And it's basically like every time you turn the page, like a piece of your body kind of leaves and you see what's underneath. And I was like, well, I don't need this. It wasn't on the list, but like, I bet some kid's going to get a kick out of this. Um, and so I definitely brought it and they were like, everyone was looking at it. We're like, this is so great. We're going to keep it here. Like, um, but like that felt okay. And like we've continued to go back there, but it's, it really does bother me kind of the structure about how it works and how we're just kind of picking ourselves up and moving us to a different place. Um, but like, we've gotten to a point now where we've been there so many times, we know the staff's names, they remember us. Um, and like, we, like Eric has had a lot of conversations with them about like, how are you actually treated? Like, like, like how much how much do we need to be tipping you while we're here to like make that worthwhile for you um and like we've heard so many times now that this is one of the best resorts in Jamaica mm -hmm. like we are getting paid appropriately everyone loves working like people are vying to come and work here because like we really are feeling supported in our families um and so that like it doesn't take the gross feeling away from me um, but it definitely feels a little bit better that at least we found a place where like our money's going to the place we want it to go. Yeah. Um, and that we can verify, like, of course they're going to say, right. oh, like, this is the best place ever, but like there are people who have been there for five or six years now. Um, yes, that's but, the biggest tell, right? If yeah. you go back and all the same people are there, that yeah. for me says, yeah, it's almost oh, it all the same. Like some of them are, um, some of them do like salsa dancing and things. So like they're professional dancers. And so like those ones are kind of phasing out, mm -hmm. um, which like awesome. Like I'm so, I'm so glad that you like found a way to, you know, use your passion somewhere else other than being like an activity coordinator for us. Like we don't, you don't need to be wasting your talents playing bocce ball with us. Right. <laughs> like, please go and be free. Um, but it's really nice to see people who kind of started as bartenders moving to different bars throughout the resort and becoming managers and things um like they really truly do have an amazing um retention there so we feel like they're probably being honest when they're saying that yeah it's used to work um, yeah I'll have to get the the yeah, place for me I can give you Lindsay's Woo um thing you felt guilty for oh no everything right do you not know me <laughs> is that a trick question <laughs> my whole life the guilt slash shame express. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a loaded question. It is. Um, hmm. I think so growing up in my house, working hard was really important. And the fact that if I worked really, really hard, I could get good grades. Like the expectation then was that my grades would be good. Um, and I remember the first test uh, I ever failed it was like a music test, like in my music class, which I loved my chorus teacher growing up. She was very good to me, um, but we were not learning music. Like even the way my kids have learned music in their music classes, like we were not learning those things in our music class because because I went to school with, in my particular grade, we were the grade level where they were like, they're going to go on their senior class trip and nobody else is ever going to be allowed to go. Like the teachers used to joke, like I wouldn't take those kids down the road to the convenience store for their trip. Like nobody wanted to deal with us. We were, oh, we no. were a particular breed. And so, um, I say we, like I was a part of the situation. I mean, um, you get everyone arrested. Right. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> So, <laughs> I know we just talked about inside jokes on our last episode, <laughs> um, but I was not one of the problem people. And um, I remember my grandparents coming and my grandmother saying to me, oh, how did, did you get your tests back yet? And I said, no, we hadn't because I had gotten it that day and I'd gotten like a 67. I don't even think I actually failed. I got a 67. It just like wasn't a hundred. <laughs> right. Right. It just was not well, a 100. Um, as my daughter says, a 100% A plus. Um, 
but so I can remember going to bed that night. That was like my grandparents picked me up from school. We were probably having um, like parent teacher conferences because they used to come to take me home for that. Um, and I don't know if everybody can hear that. All the heavens just broke loose because we're having the like every afternoon it downpours situation now. Um, but I remember it being like two o'clock in the morning and like going into the room that they stayed in at our house and waking her up to tell her I'd gotten my test back and that I had lied and said that I hadn't gotten it back. Mm. Um, There were also things that I think my mom wanted me to feel guilty for that I didn't feel guilty for growing up. And I remember we had an assembly and um, it was right near winter break and they handed out the little teeny tiny mini candy canes that like come in a big, huge, long strip and you have to like rip the little packages apart. And um, my best guy friend was one of the problems. And, um, he was like to everybody in our row, he was like, put them in your pocket, put them in your pocket. So they don't think we got one yet. Right. Because like, now I had already taken mine and put it in my backpack because I knew that I was not supposed to be eating it at school. Like, even if, Even if they had been like, everybody can eat their candy cane. My mom would have been like, you should, there should not be candy out at school just randomly. Like you didn't need to be eating that at school. So I knew that I was not going to be consuming the candy cane. And so I put it in my backpack. It was already in my backpack. So what the hell was I going to do? Take it back out and be like, we did get it. Like why? I already had enough problems. Right. So like. I got home that night and I had two and my mom was like, why do you have two? And I was like, two of what? (laughs) And she was like, two of the candy canes because the big fun thing about your parents being at your school and you go to a really tiny school is they all fucking know everything. So like my dad would be like, did you do your chem work? And I homework. And I'd be like, I don't have chem homework. And he would be like, I saw it on the board when I walked by today to go to the, like, there was nothing we could do. And so, um, my mom was like, why do you have two candy canes? Because I know they only handed them out to everybody. And she also knew that I in our house, it likely would be that we had just thrown it away when I got home. And so like, why did I have, but nobody would have given me theirs, right? Generally speaking, I would have given mine to somebody else. And I had said to particular guy friend, if you want to, you can just have mine. Like you don't have to like Mm -hmm. run a, a scam, you know? And so I was like, well, they handed them all out. And then insert guy friend's name here was like, put them in your pocket so they don't know. And they handed them out to us, you know, twice. Now in this row of children, there were maybe 10 people, 12 people. This is not a 46 child row of children, right? And my mom made me write an apology to the teacher who bought the candy canes and give her $5 to pay for the row of candy canes. Now, if I went to the store tomorrow to buy those candy canes, the number of candy canes we had would not cost $5. So I'm here to decide that inflation, like I had just paid her for all of the candy cane. Like, I mean, ridiculous, right? But like, so I remember... I didn't feel bad about doing it necessarily because I hadn't actually done anything wrong. Mm. I hadn't hidden mine. I'd already put it away. And so, but I can remember like she obviously (laughs) wished I had felt bad about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have regrets in college and things that like, I definitely feel not great about showing up the way I was showing up at the time in certain spaces. I feel badly that my parents paid so much money for me to go to school. And then like, I couldn't get my shit together freshman year because I was so unhappy and I was really sick. We had a carbon monoxide leak in my dorm 
um, hall in college. And then we realized we, that's why we were all like, not okay. But apparently some people were still fine. And I was just like the only person who literally couldn't handle life, but we all know things affect me more than they affect other people. So like, it makes sense, but I can remember like those particular things feeling really not okay about <laughs> That's funny. I mean, it's so funny. That's not the right word. You know what it, I mean. No, it's, it's, it's right. really quite funny. Like, it's ridiculous. And it shows you the conscience I had, right? Like, mm-hmm. such a heightened awareness of, like, should I or shouldn't I have whatever. Mm-hmm. I apologize. I'm blowing my nose again <laughs> for those of you at home. That's all right. They can't at least you do it quietly. I try. Like, it's never bothered me. Um, so guilty. Guilty experience. I mean... I mean, I was, I was born. In I was born guilty. Where you're, I was, I was, yes. I was born in a family where like, like any need, any emotion positive or negative was not wanted. Um, and that's fine. That's, that's my other kind of tattoo that I bring with me everywhere. Um, but yeah, I would say just kind of growing up in that environment where like you didn't get needs and you didn't get wants and you got to have no emotional response to having any of those things taken away. Um, when I was a manager at that giant law firm, so I was like a manager of five departments. I had a 15 person staff. Like I was making the most money that I had ever made. Um, and my boss had like come right out and said like, this is not your money. Um, he's like, because I had been, um, I had had four promotions in four years. He's like the computer, like we cannot like, we cannot raise the money fast enough. He's like, this is not your money. Your money's coming. Like he had even for one thing, like laid me off and rehired me like in our He's like, we're going to sign the rehiring one first. And then we're going to sign the layoff one so that you can come in at like a better, at a better pay grade for like what you're supposed to be doing. So it was still like the most money I'd ever made in my entire life. Um, and so like, I was in this job where I was really thriving and thriving. It was, I was a mess. <laughs> it was a hot mess. Um, but like from the outside, like I had my corner freaking office. I had my staff of people. I was like on the fast track to getting promoted again, which was terrifying because I already had crippling imposter syndrome. Um, and because my husband traveled so much, like he was gone eight to nine months of the year, sometimes more, like they kept coming and being like, Hey, like you can't actually have like your Ontario health card. Cause you don't live here. Um, so we decided just because I was so burned out at my job and that we could see another huge promotion coming. Um, and that I was basically going to stop functioning as a human being from all the pressure. So that's like 27, <laughs> like, like it was not a great situation. Um, but we had agreed that like, I was going to just quit my job. Like my mom had just been diagnosed with cancer. Like I had so much stuff going on. He was like, why don't you just be a housewife? He's like, you can do whatever you want. Like you can visit your friends. Like I like love just showing up at people's houses with random presents for them. Like you don't even have to answer the door. Like I'm just going to leave you a box of cupcakes, um, in your like apartment where no one will touch them obviously. But like, I had a friend once who was having a terrible time with her landlord and I like took public transit 40 minutes to her place before the gym to drop her off a jar of pickles and various voodoo tools so that she could have a voodoo pickle party with her roommate. And then was like, okay, love you. Bye. I gotta go (laughs) left and went 40 minutes back home. Like that's kind of how I like to live my life. That was kind of where, um, I was feeling happy and sort of calm in my nervous system. And so my, my partner was like, Hey, like, why don't you like, we don't need your money right now. Um, like, why don't you stop working? And then you can kind of recoup a little bit, recover from this crazy burnout that I've been having. Um, and you can just kind of hang out with me when I swing into town. Like we can actually hang out because if I'm home for 24 hours on a Tuesday, like you're also home. Um, and so I remember kind of being in this phase where I was a housewife and I felt like I wasn't really contributing anything, even though my husband's career took off because he could come home and sleep and I could turn around his suitcase and I could handle all of his home things. And he came home and he just had to go to his doctor's appointments. And like, I had rescheduled the dentist. Like I understand now kind of looking back, but like his success was because I was there kind of being his pit crew. Um, But I remember being in that situation and like wanting to marathon train. And so I needed better shoes. Like I broke three bones. Like I got three different marching fractures in my feet because I was running for so many hours and shoes that weren't designed for that. And so I was like, I need like a $250 pair of shoes. Um, Do I deserve that? Is that something that I'm allowed to have? 
and I'm like, I need a haircut. And girl haircuts are like $120 here. Like, do I deserve a haircut? Should I be learning how to cut my own hair? Like, am I allowed to ask for these things? Like, I like my body's changing. Like, I lost a hundred pounds when I quit my job because I didn't need all the medication anymore. Um, like I was like wearing these tents of clothes, being like, do I deserve new clothes? Um, and so I think that when we're talking about guilt, like guilt that I will share on the podcast. Um, sort of getting in that space of like, do I deserve these like basic human things or not? Because I don't bring in money. Um, I would say that that hits is like, when you ask like, what makes you feel guilty? Like that is the first thing that comes to mind. And I still have it because as a coach, like I still don't bring in as much money as I did as a manager, just because now I have overhead expenses. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's still like, I need a haircut. Like, do you need a haircut? Like I need new running shoes. Like, do you need them this month? Um, so yeah, that got a little more real than I meant it to. Yeah. Oops. If you're on YouTube, look away, look away. No, that's, <laughs> that's, um, as a military spouse, I feel that with you Yeah, because, you know, we've had similar life experiences of having partners who are not home and having to be yeah. the person who, I mean, some of it you have to do because there's nobody else to do it. Yep. And then some of it you do because of who both of us are and yeah. that we are people who would go above and beyond, but then it does leave you at some point in your life, like realizing you haven't even met your, like, yeah. you haven't even met your own the needs basic for a very, needs, like, right. Yeah. Like, do I deserve this medication from my doctor? Like that, like I could probably white knuckle it, but like, or like, Ooh, like they said I needed the expensive version of that. And like, because he's self-employed and now I'm self-employed, like we don't have insurance. Like this is not like the States. If you, like, mm-hmm. you need a job here to have insurance because you get insurance, like you can work at Tim Hortons and get insurance. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's like totally accessible, but we don't have a pool that we can sort of join. And so like, I just want to go like $450 worth of antibiotics. And I'm like, Ooh, like, but do I need these? Like, could I, yes. Is the answPS to you? I know. I know. (laughs) But like the look on the pharmacist's face when they're like, do you have it? Do we just not write down your insurance? And I'm like, no, (laughs) they're like, you're not going to be able to tap that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But it's the same thing, like having to deal with health stuff and be like, I'm not bringing in all the money. Like my business is successful, Mm -hmm. but like, it's not as successful as his business. And like, do I, like he's working hard and he's bringing in all this money. Like, and I'm just here with my little gut infection. Like maybe I can hold it out. Like maybe I should just try the antimicrobials again, which are not that less expensive, like still expensive. But (laughs) Yeah, it's like stupid, stupid things where I feel like if it didn't come from where it came from, I would be like, obviously, I should access like medical care. Like, obviously, mm-hmm. it's more expensive with me like breaking my legs all the time. Um, I should probably not do that. Um, I can probably spring for like the good shoes because they also last like six months. Like I was going through the regular shoes. I needed them every six weeks because I was getting hundreds of miles on them. Um, I was like, it's actually probably less expensive if I get these. And like, then his mom is buying them for my birthday and my dad's buying them for my birthday. I was like, get the word out. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Let me get the word out. (laughs) I need the expensive shoes. No, that's like running is not a cheap hobby. Like I don't think people understand like when people are like, you could go outside and run for free. I'm like for free, my shoes cost more than a gym membership. Are you stupid? (laughs) Yeah. And like, they're only for running. Some mm-hmm. some guy like tried to mansplain to me running shoes the other day. So I have I have very specialized shoes for very specialized activities. I do um like CrossFit and so I have the like Metcon training shoes because you need those to protect your joints. Um like you need them for the specific things that we do that give you a very specific type of stability and so they're only for weight training because they will hurt your body in other situations. Like you would never ever run in a Metcon shoe, you will break your legs. Yep. Um And then the running shoes are so expensive and they're so like specifically designed and you wear out the foam so quickly if you don't give them rest days and things like that, that you only run and you're running. She's like, are you going somewhere to run? You bring sneakers to like walk in and then you switch into your running shoes. Um, And so I was having a conversation with a girl at the gym about like, I have pink, I have pink net cons because of course I do. Um, And she's like, oh my God, I haven't seen that pink color yet. She's like, that's adorable. Like what season are those from? So Mm -hmm. I can go and look and see if they still have them. Um, And I was like, oh, like they're pretty old. Like I think they're actually dead. 
because my squat's off. Like I'm getting yelled at at my squat all the time. And I'm like, okay, my shoes are officially dead because my mechanics are off now. Um, and some guy was like, oh no, Metcons last forever. And I'm like, it says on the side of my shoe, they last for a thousand hours. And I've trained in them almost daily for three years now. <laughs> and then some of some other guy was like, well, maybe I'm just really sensitive because I run a lot. And when I run, I get a really particular um, pain in my ankle from an old injury. So like, as soon as my shoes dies, I start getting tendonitis in my ankle. Um, and I'm like, okay, like it's time to move on. And I was like, well, I'm getting, I'm getting a lot of pain in my running shoes and those are brand new. And so I'm thinking maybe it's these shoes. And the guy was like, oh, well, you only run in your running shoes. He's like, you have to save them for running or you will them out. And yeah. I was like, I'm having a conversation currently about how I'm a marathon runner. Weird. It never occurred to me that I should only wear them for running. Like, oh my uh, gosh. Uh, First of all, I love you because if I can tell you the amount of times that I'm like, you can't wear that shoe for what you're doing. Yeah. Like it drives me bonkers. Yep. And I had done um, injury prevention for um, a high school marching band where we live. And it's really hard, right? Because we live in a place where um, socioeconomically we are very high mm -hmm. in in terms of comparison of where we live, which is saying something because we are not like wealthy people. And so, um, you know, to know that kids were using the sneakers that they had just like killed the, the school year before and then brought them back because they were going to get new ones for the school year. And I always felt so bad because my son would show up. I would buy him two brand new pairs of sneakers that would give him good mobility in all of different directions. And he would trade them out every other day. And I just, I always felt guilty about the fact that he could have that and other people couldn't that usually we do provide, like if we can, we give anybody that needs anything, whatever they need, but it was really hard doing injury prevention and having the kids come to me individually and be like, why blah, blah, blah. And I would say to them like, well, here's the deal. You are, you are in a running shoe and you running shoes are to do this with, and you are how many times a day do you actually do this? Like none. So like, let me look at your feet. Let me look at your walk. Let me look at your, you know, how you move and let's see what kind of shoe would be best for you to have good mobility and that will actually work for your mm -hmm. personal body. Um, and then my usually my usual recommendation was buy an inexpensive version of that only for these weeks and then out they go because you won't need them again. But like I always felt really terrible about that. And um I think that because I carry a lot of guilt around a lot about a lot of things, like I can't see a person who's like an unhoused person on the street and not go home and like mm -hmm. want to vomit. Like I just can't. Yeah. So I really appreciate that you like went deep. So I will, I will give one because <laughs> you were like super vulnerable. But when I was really young, after my parents got divorced, my mom and I had no money. And we lived like in like single parent housing where you could only be there for a certain amount of time. And like, that's the time you had to like get yourself back on your feet and things like that. And we did not do extra things. And my mom like basically didn't eat ever. And so um, I remember one particular time we had gone and gotten ice cream and when we would go do things, my mom would never get anything. And so like, I, I still don't do well with that. Like, even as a mom, um, I have to force myself to, to do a thing or get a thing if we're doing it with my kids because they want me to. And I remember like not being able to enjoy my thing because she didn't have one. And so even if I don't want a thing, I usually force myself to like whatever. Um, but it's my natural instinct not to, mm -hmm. because now I'm in the position of like that. I now I'm the mom and I don't get the thing. So you can have the thing, which is not how our family needs mm -hmm. to be. 
Um, but we got ice cream and she never used to get her own ice cream and she had, and I literally walked like two steps and mine fell on the ground and she gave me hers. And I remember like very specifically trying to eat it, feeling like I was going to get sick because like, I just wanted her to have it. I didn't want to have it. And so like, yeah, those are, it's childhood stuff is, is rough, man. Like we, we also grew up with like nothing. Like you never got anything the day you asked for it. Like it was Mm -hmm. always like, is it going to be next paycheck or is it going to be next month? Or is it going to be in a couple months? Like, I didn't know that people were getting stuff the day they asked for it. Like, that's not a real thing. Um, And it was only like, if you needed it, like I had like shoes taped together and things like that was kind of normal. And like, my parents were doing the best they could. Like, it's nothing, it's nothing against them. Um, But like coming from like, like Eric's family is more affluent, obviously than mine wouldn't take a whole ton. Um, But like when Eric and I were renovating our house, like instead of taking out a line of credit, like Eric's parents just ran it off their line of credit. Mm -hmm. Um, and like, they, like, we had like a, like, we had a huge problem when we renovated, we meant to change a couple things and we ended up with like only the bricks on the outside of our building were the same, just because there were like fire hazards and foundation problems. Um, and I remember a conversation with my parents once where I think my stepdad maybe wasn't supposed to tell us, but he had mentioned how much my mom's mortgage was on the house that she had bought when we were kids. Mm-hmm. Um, like I was like teeny tiny when she bought that house by herself. It was like her crowning moment. Um, and like, I remember him telling me what their mortgage was and how they were never going to get out from under that mortgage. And like Eric's parents had just handed us like, six or seven times that amount of money. And so like we get like tell him all the time that I'm kind of stuck between two worlds because now I belong to this affluent world and I don't feel like I belong here and I feel guilty for any kind of spending money especially if it's for me because where I came like we just didn't have any money. So like it shocks me sometimes that I feel like guilt ridden about mm-hmm. needing these antibiotics but then pancake needed an emergency surgery for like thousands of dollars on Monday. And he was like, Oh no, like, I hope she's okay. Like that wasn't as much money as I was thinking like, phew. And I was like, well, like, right. I never would have heard of this amount of money. Like I paid every single penny going mm-hmm. to university just because there was no money. <laughs> like mm-hmm. they're like, well, if you want to go, like you get to start working on your 16th birthday, like have at her. Like, mm-hmm. so it's sort of this weird sort of juxtaposition where he says things about money and he says things about minimum wage and he says things about like people earning things. And I'm like, yeah, you've never actually worked a minimum wage job. Like come to me when you've got to pay for university and residence and your like practicum and you get paid six forty an hour. Like then we're going to have right. a conversation about it. <laughs> like, yes. Yeah. And I, and I feel similarly as an adult, but it's really odd, like when that time period hit in my life, because then my mom got remarried and she and my dad both had a teaching job and teachers don't make anything, but like both of them together, like they were just very smart. And Mm -hmm. my dad had paid a lot of very smart attention when he he was still single. Like my, my stepdad is my dad. That's when I refer to my dad, that's who I'm talking about. And so like when I went to college, he had started a college fund for his kids before he ever had met my mom. Mm -hmm. And so like, because of the dynamic and who he is as a person, it would never have been a question. But like, in my mind, not every step parent would be like, that money is for a kid that doesn't belong to me. Mm -hmm. So like, it was a big deal. I feel very guilty about like not having killed myself to do well, um, because he was paying for it. I had a scholar, I had a full scholarship, but because of circumstances, it didn't start until my second year because I was five years on a four-year scholarship, right. which is not math. Um, yeah. I'm not good at math, but I can do that math. And so, like, it was odd because I didn't grow up with lots of money, but I certainly grew up more comfortable than we had been when we, like, didn't have a car. And my mom was, like, subbing because she couldn't find a teaching job at you know, the time where we were living. And, you know, my grandfather never made more than like $6,000 a year his whole life. So like, they weren't just able to whatever. And so like, 
I didn't have, I didn't want for anything growing up, but I had like two really good pairs of pants Mm -hmm. or like I had two good pairs of jeans. I had one really good dress. I had a few good shirts that lasted, like you're talking about with your shoes, you know, that lasted, but like we weren't going shopping on the weekends just to shop, to go buy something new, certainly. And like, I definitely got like when it was going to be golf season and I had to have golf balls and tees and whatever for this season, like that was all in my Easter basket. Everything I needed for that season was in my Easter basket because like $20 for 12 golf balls is outrageous. Then I bought them myself when I was older, but like you would get your winter coat for Christmas. You would get your winter boots for Christmas. I would get them for my birthday because that was just before <laughs> like that, that crap broke loose. But like you don't, um, it is weird to have, to be to- co- totally comfortable mm-hmm. as an adult and not need to think about those things. But even if it's not conscious, like, I can feel in my body the discomfort. It's so odd to be. And like, all I want is to be able to make a ton of money so I can put it in the places that don't, like, I just want nothing more to be like, oh, tiny theater, you know, who does stuff for kids who don't have the money to pay to be here. How much do you need to be open for the year? And I write the check and I give it to them and nobody ever has to think about it again. Like that's all I want in my life is to be able to be the person in my, with the checkbook. That's like you X, Y, Z here we are like Mm -hmm. done. Yeah. I think like a huge turning point for me, like realizing kind of where I came from versus where I am is the first time my mother-in-law bought me a winter jacket. So like I like all growing up, like I grew up in a snow belt, like it was heckin' cold. Um, and everything came from like Walmart or like I was buying like pea coats off like H and M and like there's nothing knocking those things. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was like 25, maybe 24, and I like showed up to go winter camping with everybody in, like minus four Canadian winter in my little like felt pea coat. And Eric's mom was like, no, no. <laughs> No. And so she gave me her coat and it was the first time I had ever not been cold in a Canadian winter. I was like, what the heck is this magic? And I came back and she was like, Hey, like for your birthday, cause my birthday's also in the winter. She's like, Hey, for your birthday, like, I'm going to take you out and get you like a real coat. Cause this is no. And so like, I came back and I had like a real ski jacket and like, she bought me two coats. She's like, this one is for fancy. And it was like a nice black coat. And she's like, this one is for fun. She's like, like, they have to cover your butt and they have to whatever. Like, this is how you buy a proper coat. Like I've never been skiing. Um, she's like, this is what, this is what a warm coat feels like. Um, and like, I've never been cold since. And I'm like, wow, like, this is the difference of money. Like, this is what separates people is that I had to buy a coat every year because they were $50 and I had to be cold because that was what I could do. And then, you know, Eric's mom kind of swooped in with her credit card and was like, no, this is what being warm feels like. And I got those coats like 10 years ago and I still have them Mm -hmm. and I'm still warm. And so it's just like, oh, like my inner social worker, like coming from a place where we very much relied on the social safety net and coming into this place where people can just throw money at problems is very jarring sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like that's not to make us like we're some kind of rich family. Like that's not what it is. But from where I came from, like I definitely did like a Cinderella glow up. Um, like my high school had bars on the windows for reference. <laughs> like people got arrested in class sometimes. Like it was the <laughs> our high school didn't. I think they were hoping we would leave. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, well, normally I would say we got we got to pick an uplifting one magically. But I think I think for today we're done. Yeah. Are we done? Yeah, I think we're done. Yeah, we're done. Okay. Okay, love you, bye. Love you, bye.